So for a first time home buyer, there's a pre-closing stage of the transaction. There's a closing and post-closing stage. Mm. So you also find, need to know whether there are liens on the property. So um, if the seller has not paid ground rent, then it means that there's a lien yeah. on the property. Then also property rates. If there's a property on the land and uh, property rates are not being paid, then also that's, that constitutes a lien. Nobody is supposed to sell land if the land is not registered. Okay. Yeah, that's the ideal situation is that you only buy land that is registered. That's the ideal situation. And you reduce that area into your possession by probably farming or building on the, in, on the land. Mm -hmm. You may not have to purchase the land for the land to become yours if you're an indigent. Wow. Okay, okay. Yes, mm -hmm. because that is part of our customary law. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The terms and conditions and all of that will be the same as the terms and conditions in the existing agreement because the law says so. Yeah. You follow me? So the laws have made provision said that for a Ghanaian, although you have not even, it doesn't have to be expressed, the, the terms of the old agreement will be, yes, yeah, well, yeah. yes will be transferred into the new agreement. Mm -hmm. Property is something that, out, that outlasts you, mm -hmm. right? So in order for you to be able to pass down property to the next generation, it means that you ought to have followed due process because okay. if you don't follow due process and the time comes for you to pass it down to the next generation and it is attacked the the way you are acquire the property is attacked yeah. what it means is that, that that transaction can be set aside oh wow. yes okay. you know so so the only way you safeguard your interest in property in ghana is by complying with Hello, my name is NKK and welcome to Sessa Global, Africa's leading property marketplace. Today we're in conversation with Emmanuel, a real estate lawyer whose office just recently won the best real estate law firm in Ghana. Today we're going to be talking all things buying uh, houses and properties for the first time. So yes. thank you for having this conversation with me. Thanks for coming. Okay. So let's let's just get right into it. Um is it safe to buy a property in Ghana? Like how would absolutely, you Absolutely, absolutely. I mean it's 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 safe. Buying property in Ghana is like buying property in any of the developed countries. The only thing is that you have to um, comply with the rules, the rules on purchasing property in Ghana. Yeah. That, that's how you safeguard your interest in the property by complying with the rules. So can you expand on some of those rules? So what kind of requirements yes, would a first time yes, home yes. buyer? So for a first time home buyer, there's a pre-closing stage of the transaction. There's a closing and post-closing stage. Mm -hmm. Now, at the pre-closing stage is where you are required to do your due diligence. So the due diligence at this stage is conducting a search at the Lands Commission. This is a registry that has a recording of all transactions on land. Mm -hmm. Then you ought to do a search at the High Court to find out whether there's litigation on the land. At the the land use and special planning authority to find out about the zoning mm -hmm. and then we have the um, the ground rent search so you also find, need to know whether there are liens on the property so um, if the, uh, the, the the seller has not paid ground rent then it means that there's a lien yeah. on the property then also property rates. If there's a property on the land and uh, property rates are not being paid, then also that's, that constitutes a lien, which means that in the event that the property is sold, the government agency can come for the property, sell it in order to recover whatever is owed them. So that is the pre-closing stage. That's the due diligence that you do there. The other searches that you also have to do, but I we can't go through all of them. Yeah. But you know, this is the barest minimum. Then, and this can be done with the help of a lawyer. Of right? course, yes. of course. I mean, you can't do a successful real estate transaction in Ghana without a lawyer. Yeah. And the historical basis and all that stuff. But that's not why we are here. So let's just focus <laughs> on why. And then at the closing stage, that is where you prepare the legal document. Mm. In Ghana, currently, it is only a lawyer that can prepare legal documents. Yeah. Because the legal document is a is a is a is an instrument or a letter affecting land. Yeah. So if you are, um, if you want to purchase property, you don't use any other professional other than a lawyer 
prepared the legal document. That's what the law says. Yeah. Any document that is prepared by a non-lawyer is void. Oh, and wow, if okay. you are a non-lawyer and prepare a legal document, it's a criminal offense. Yes. Oh, okay. And even if you're a lawyer and you are not in good standing, for instance, you've been suspended and you prepare a legal document, that legal document is void. Okay. Yeah. So, so that's how critical it is for you to do the right thing. You ought to ensure that you are following the rules step by step. Yes. So that's pre-closing, closing, and then there's post-closing. Okay. So I'm sure people have landed in sticky situations because they have Oh yes, absolutely. Right so many people have. So many. So many. But the post-closing stage is where you your interest is registered at the Land Commission. Yeah. So that means that it gives notice to the whole world that you are now currently the owner of the land. Yes. So uh, so when you register your interest, it's an official document. Yes, that, that is exists. given to you. Yeah, that's given that to you. That shows that you are now the owner of the land. Yeah. And it's called a land title certificate. Yeah. So in Accra, Tema, Kumasi, and Awutu Senya, which is in the Cape Coast environment, uh, they give land title certificates. Mm. But in other areas of Ghana, you get a registered deed. Okay. You don't get a land title certificate, you get a registered deed. Yes. So is that available to Ghanaian citizens and foreigners? Yeah. You, you mean the. Land certificates. Land certificate. No, the title deed. The yes, yes, yes. Once you buy property in Ghana, whether you're a foreigner or a Ghanaian, you are entitled to get a land certificate. And in fact, nobody is supposed to sell land if the land is not registered. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's the ideal situation. Is that you only buy land that is registered. That's the ideal situation. There are instances where the land is not registered. But you can still buy it, but it's a bit tricky. And like I said, you can't do these things without a lawyer. Yeah, okay. yeah. So is that how we end up with situations where a piece of land is sold? Times? Exactly. I mean, um, if the land is registered and you go and do a search, the interest of the registered owner is recorded in the register. So you know that you have the interest to the land, right? Mm -hmm. Whereas if the land is not registered, but the person is claiming to be the owner of the land and the person transacts with another person, there's no way of finding out. Oh, you, you get me? Yeah, there's yeah, no way yeah. of finding out that um, this land has been transacted on so many times because there's no record of any transaction on the land. So that's why it's impo important for you to deal with persons who have registered their title to land. Okay. So um, there's a lot of people in our audience who are foreigners yeah. who are interested in buying in the Ghanaian property market. Yeah. Um, are there any key differences between buying as a foreigner versus buying as a Ghanaian? Um, well, there are some differences, but I mean, it's just, there are slight minor, minor, minor advantages if you're a Ghanaian. Okay. So if you're a Ghanaian and you are an indigenous, I'm just being technical now, just a bit technical. Lawyers sometimes are a bit technical. But if you're an indigenous of a community and you settle in an area and you reduce that area into your possession by probably farming or building on the, in, on the land, mm -hmm. you may not have to purchase the land for the land to become yours if you're an indigenous. Wow. Okay, okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because that is part of our customary law. Yeah. You don't have to purchase the land because you, you just reduce it to your possession. And then you maybe once in a while at one tenancy to the Alodia owner. The Alodia owner is maybe like the, the paramount, the chief, the chief, or the family head. You at one tenancy by just giving them maybe a portion of the crops that you harvest every year or something. Mm -hmm. Just to show that, you know, you are it's a, token. It's a, a token, yeah, the sign of respect. Mm -hmm. But um, you don't have to pay a dime. So some, an indigent can, uh, can acquire land through, the, through those means, mm -hmm. through settlements. But and also an indigent can also pay for land like a foreigner does. But if it is two land, so two land is land that belongs to a chief yeah. and a community. Yeah. So a community that has a chief is called a stool. Yeah. So stool land, if it's family land, if it's clan land, then you cannot have more than fifty years if you purchase oh, that land okay. at a, at a time. Yeah. So the law is that if it's family land, clan land, stool land, you can have more than 50 years. Yeah. But if you are buying from an individual, 
then so you can have it yes you can have it for a longer period mm -hmm. all right so um essentially that is that is the law on on, on the Ghanaian side yes, yes on the Ghanaian side. But on the so, foreign on the foreign side um and on the Ghanaian side additionally is that the 50 years that you get the renewal comes by by operation of law so it is so the renewal is implied okay explain so that. what i mean is mm -hmm. that assuming you're a foreigner and you're buying property from me yeah i give you 50 years after the expiration of the 50 years your renewal is guaranteed without so me having to do anything you don't have to do anything it is guaranteed okay so then by what would stop that law. okay by operation of law the renewal is guaranteed yes. right because the law says so yes however for a foreigner the renewal is not guaranteed by operation of law yeah for a foreigner the foreigner must expressly state in the agreement that he wants a renewal and you have to state the terms and conditions of the renewal including how much money you want to pay for the renewal oh, well, yes okay. if you have to be so certain because maybe 50 years from now i mean i don't i don't know your age but i you know 50 years is a long time yeah, yeah. Yeah, so if you're not here and you haven't especially stated it in agreement how is it going to be determined uh, how many years has been agreed to be given to you yeah. the amount of money that you have to pay for the renewal the terms and conditions that the covenant etc for the renewal how is that going to be determined yeah, and so for a foreigner it has to be expressed but for a Ghanaian mm -hmm. the terms and conditions and all of that will be the same as the terms and conditions in the existing agreement because the law says so yeah. you follow me so the laws has made provision said that for a Ghanaian although you have not even it doesn't have to be expressed the the terms of the old agreement will be yes yeah, well, yeah. yes we we'll transferred into the new agreement mm -hmm. but for a foreigner it is not automatic it's not certain, it has okay. to be expressly stated yeah yes so that's how it is so okay just as a foreigner before purchasing the property are there certain things that would make you more eligible? So like, for example, um, is it easier for people who have work permits to no, buy properties? No, 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 no. Anybody at all can buy property. You can even be in Abu Dhabi and buy property in Ghana without even visiting Ghana once. Wow, okay. Yes. You yeah. don't so have there's to no requirements. have a work permit. You don't need a Criminal anything. record, you know, all nope, those things. Nope, nothing. Okay. I mean, you just, provided there's no money laundering and, you know, there's really no there's uh, no restriction. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, but how about documents? What kind of documents do people have to prepare to you purchase mean, a property? To purchase a, a property yeah, as, as a foreigner. foreigner. Yeah. So the same documents that are prepared for Ghanaians. So um, we have to start with, first of all, it could be an offer letter mm -hmm. from the vendor to the purchaser. Then the purchaser will accept the offer by way of a letter or by signing the offer letter. And then the parties proceed to do an SPA or a contract for a lease. An SP is a sale and purchase agreement. Contract for release is also the same thing. Essentially, they mean the same thing. Those are different names. Mm -hmm. And then we have um, the transfer deed being prepared. All right. But in Ghana, there are rules on um, the preparation of these documents. So the document has to be in writing. And when they say writing, what it actually means is it must have the names of the parties. Yeah. It must have their addresses, mm -hmm. it must have the consideration, consideration is the amount of money being paid for the land, it must have a description of the land, a proper description of the land so that you can identify the land, mm -hmm. you know, and I mean it must clearly have a site plan, so which is, which has been approved by director of survey mm -hmm. and it's lands commission compliant, it has a barcode at the back. Mm -hmm. Once you meet this requirement, then you've met the requirement of writing. So if you go and read the text and then the text says, um, um, a conveyance must be in writing and you think that just merely by putting it in writing you have fulfilled the requirement that agreement is not enforceable unless it has these things that i'm talking about okay yeah so that's that's a lot that's yeah, a lot yeah. yeah so that's why you need a professional to assist you yeah because what actually constitutes writing is not what is in the in the in the land act mm -hmm. but it's what the judges have said constitutes writing and this is what this is what the judges have said yeah Okay, so it's yeah. a lot. So <laughs> we need lawyers. So, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, I think a, a thing, something that um, foreigners might be interested in knowing is if purchasing property can lead them to citizenship. Yeah. Oh no! Unfortunately, it does not exist currently. 
Okay. There's no law which in Ghana which would automatically make you a citizen by purchasing property. Yeah. Um, but you can take steps um, to become a resident. Mm -hmm. You know by following the requirements, and if you're eligible, you can qualify to become a resident, a permanent resident. There is a law in the making which is called the Homeland Return Act. Oh, okay. Homeland Return Act, yes. <coughs> and I understand this law has been made before Parliament. And I understand the President is eager to assent to this law before he leaves office. What, what, so, is, what is the law? So here? this Homeland Return Act essentially creates a pathway for all persons, all diasporans who have African descent, who have African descent mm -hmm. to become citizens easily okay so that's it so it creates a pathway for them to become citizens of Ghana. Okay. yes and you must be an you must be of african descent yeah uh, that's the main requirement that's the main requirement okay. yes so hopefully those two i'm sure there's a lot of well i mean the, we are all banking our hopes on that you know mm -hmm. especially the foreigners yeah, yeah. <laughs> definitely, definitely. yeah but i believe we'll go to there's a serious commitment on government's part and um i know that recently they have gone out you know, to uh, showcase what Ghana is offering mm, to the yeah, world. Yeah. And as part of what they showcase, I mean, a part of the uh, selling the gold, the, uh, gold and all that to the, to the world, they also uh, told them that, uh, to the, especially the Africans in the diaspora, that they are looking to pass this law by the end of next year. Oh, okay. Yes, I mean, that's, that's, what, that's what I was there. So I, okay, I, so I, you know, I you have the insights. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, cool. So then, obviously, as more and more foreigners come to Ghana, um, they'll be looking to stay long term. Yeah. And obviously, they have children next to kin. Is it possible to pass down property? Yes, it's yeah. possible. It's possible children to pass down property to your to the next generation. But, like I said, um, you know, property is something that out that outlasts you, mm. right? So, in order for you to be able to pass down property to the next generation it means that you ought to have followed due process because okay. if you don't follow due process and the time comes for you to pass it down to the next generation and it is attacked the the way you are to acquire the property is attacked yeah. what it means is that 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 transaction can be set aside oh wow. yes okay. you know so so the only way you safeguard your interest in property in ghana is by complying with the law so you have to start complying with the law from the beginning, from the time of acquisition. Yeah. Okay, so everything needs to be well done uh, from yes, the beginning. Because if you do your due diligence, yeah. it means that you are acting in good faith. Mm -hmm. And once you acted in good faith, that 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 protection covers you throughout the time you own the property. Yeah. You follow because in Ghana, the rule is caveat emptor, and I believe that rule is in other jurisdictions also. So caveat emptor simply means buyer beware. Um, can you outline some of the sticky situations that first-time sure. buyers might find themselves in? Yes, 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 and yes. Maybe some ways to avoid them. Yeah. All right. Uh, there's one interesting one I remember which happened not too long ago. So a client came here mm. and uh, we had a discussion on the scope of work. Mm. So I told them oh, we had to do a search and lands commission. But first of all, what I do is we start with a surveyor. So I get a surveyor to go on the land, we do a side plan, mm -hmm. and then we use that side plan to do the searches. Yeah. All right. So we took the she took notes and then left. And then subsequently, like after, uh, she came back with the search, the side plan, and everything. So it means that clearly she had followed the notes, you know, and gone to do the work. So so I had to reduce the fee. Mm, okay. All right. So I reduced the fee, but I I put in a caveat that. Um, I assume that the site plan is correct. Mm. I assume that the search is accurate. You know, I've made these assumptions. And so from the point of the assumption, I mean, I started the work from there. Yeah. So I did the work based on the assumptions I made. So recently, a uh, client contacts me and the client is like, um, so the client found out that um, the particular land that 
they went to pick a uh, falls in the road. Oh, okay. So mm-hmm. the developer has to move them from the road to uh, another place, and they did a search of that place to it belongs to somebody else. Mm-hmm. So now you know what do we do next? I said, well, then it means that we have to get a refund, or you know, they give you another piece of land, you know, but that kind of thing. But I mean, for me, this situation would not have occurred mm-hmm. if. You know, you just got a professional to handle the business for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. get me? Like, I mean, I would uh, get a surveyor that I trust to go on the land, who will send me pictures, will tell me, will give me a report that there's a wall on the land, mm. uh, there's this on the land, you know, that on the land, it uh, falls within a road, that kind of thing. But if for the uninitiated, you are just thinking, oh, I've gotten the land, mm. let me just get a surveyor to do a side plan yeah. without considering all these other things about uh, people being a, a, a encroaching on the land and all that oh, stuff. True. I mean, so uh, that was one situation, bad situation. Another one was uh, someone came to see me because they had a, a, an issue with the developer. Mm. And so we took the, he wanted me to sue the developer. So I said, all right, I'm, you know, I'm going to sue. Mm. So I started looking through the documents and I realized that he has a lesser lease. So let's just take it that the developer said the developer said to give him um, maybe twenty years. Yeah. But then he I go through a document I realized that the developer will only give him ten years. Oh okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So that means he's been shortchanged by ten. Mm. And I'm like, look <laughs> this this is this is this is not right. I mean let's let's add this to the reliefs we are seeking from, from, from the court. Yeah. So I mean the point is um you can do the transaction on your own, mm-hmm. all right, and you will not have, you may not have any, um, I, I mean, any issues. You may not have any issues, but um, if you do it with a lawyer, the chances of you getting it right is higher than if you do it on your own. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. That's that, that's the point I'm making. So. Okay. So just make sure you have someone, it. a lawyer yeah, with you. Just, yeah. just make sure you have a professional and. In, when it comes to conveyance or land acquisition, the professional that is required is a lawyer. Mm. Right? There are other players in there like surveyors, valuers and all that stuff, architects and stuff. But they are all coming at certain points in time. Mm. But if it comes to the acquisition of the land itself, can't do it without a lawyer. Because assuming an issue should arise right now about the acquisition, where are you going to resolve the issue? It's in court. Yeah. So why would you want to do it? Otherwise, yeah, 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 yeah. Start know, the process right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay, cool. So then now in terms of like acquiring land, I, I'm sure there's different ways that you can acquire land. Um, can you explain the difference between a leasehold and then oh, ownership? Yes. That's a very good question. So there are different interests in land. Yeah. The highest interest is what we call the loyal interest. Okay. So the, so the UK Crown has a loyal interest over UK lands. Okay. All right. So what it means is that they own the land forever. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah. Their interest will never die. Yeah. Yeah. That's an alodia owner. Yeah. Good. Uh, but and then in Ghana, the alodia owner we have what we call customary law freehold. Mm. The customary law freehold is somebody that an alodia owner may have given you like a gift. We have gifted the land to you. Okay. So, so but, by customary law, mm-hmm. you now have a freehold interest in the land because they gave you the land using the customary means. Yeah. You know, maybe they danced a, a bit, uh, they ate some cola, uh, you know, all that. There were witnesses there, mm-hmm. and then you know you give them a, 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 a hen or something in exchange for the land, and then you get your land. Yeah. So and that that that's yours for customary well? law freehold. It's okay. forever. Okay. Then we have. Usufactory interest. Mm. Usufactory interest is what I just explained that a person who is an individual of a community can just go and settle on land. Mm. Yeah. And then the land becomes yours. Mm. Through settlement. Forever as well? Forever. Okay. That's usufactory interest. But it is potentially because assuming you don't atone tenancy to the Alodia owner, because you, you should be giving Oh yeah. yeah, yes, yeah. Then uh, then there's it can a, be taken away from okay. you because, okay, so. yeah, because now you want to create an alodial interest by yourself. Okay. Yeah. Because if you if you don't atone tenancy for twelve years, then it means that you yourself you want to show that you are the masters. You are create yes. Yeah, so okay. in matter by law, you are creating a rival 
interest, which is going to rival that of the Aloda owner, which is also another Aloda Aloda interest. Yeah, okay, okay. You get me? Yeah. So it's the gravest in the law not to atone tenancy to the Aloda owner. Yeah. And uh, you said 12 years, so that's 12 the, years. the max. Yeah, maximum. Okay. So okay. if after 12 years you don't atone tenancy to the Aloda owner, you are now claiming adverse possession, mm. which which is an interest which will override that of the Aloda owner's interest. Mm-hmm. Which I mean, so for that offense, before the 12 years, the Arodia owner can just kick you off the land mm. by re entering, taking possession mm. of it, and sending it to somebody because you are refusing to atone tenancy. Yeah, yeah. That's a usufactory interest. Then we have leasehold. Mm. So leasehold is where you have a lease for a definite term, mm. like 50 years, 99 years, you know, 75 years. That's a leasehold. Mm. And then we have. Um, these are customary tenancies. We call them Ebusa and Ebu. Mm-hmm. So these are customary tenancies. Yeah. I mean, these are the interests that you have in land. And the fascinating thing is that on this piece of land that we are on, because this is yeah. land, this is well property, where you are sitting now yeah. is land. On this piece of land, all the interests I've mentioned exist on this land. Okay. Or they can exist on this land. Okay, okay, so one piece of land can have yes, all the interest. Yes. Okay. I mean one piece of land can have all the interest. Maybe this land, for instance, where we are, mm-hmm. we, I, it's possible we have the Alodia interest in here. Because mm-hmm. it's possible it's for, it belongs to the Osusto. Mm-hmm. We can have the customary law freehold, assuming that it was gifted or something. Yeah, yeah. We can have um um use factory interest and then we can also have a leasehold because mm-hmm. You know, I'm renting it. Yeah. So it could the my interest would be a leasehold. Yeah. So in this particular piece of land, I've identified a number of interests in it. Okay. And all these interests you have to recognize them. That is why it's impressive for the lawyer to review the documents and to see and to ensure that you are not offending the loyal owner. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. So okay. I think let's say for someone who has a leasehold. Yes. Um it, there's the worry that you know maybe one day someone can come and kick you off your land. There have been situations where you know people think they have the uh, a solid leasehold and then they are sort of kicked off the land. Yeah. Uh, should people worry about situations like this? Oh yes, like, like I said, I mean, look, the, you should be worried if you are not going strictly by the law. Okay. And in every civilized society, if you don't follow the law, there are consequences. Mm-hmm. So if you are uh, an owner of property and you have not registered your land, right? Or you haven't registered your lease. You show that potentially a conflict could arise mm. where a rival claimant can say they are coming for your land. Mm. And you have to go to court to resolve that issue. Yeah. Now, if you have even registered your land and you are not paying ground rent to the Alodia owner, you show that potentially the Alodia owner can get offended and come for their land, just yeah. as I'm telling you. So there are so many instances where uh, if you will fall foul of the, the the covenant in your agreement, the land can be taken from you. Yeah. All right. So uh, there are so many instances. That's why it's imperative for you to get a lawyer, professional, to go through the documents to ensure that you are doing what is required by law. Okay. So I mean, that would be your tip. To yes. Ensure yes, that everything exactly, is secure. Exactly. Okay. All right. Um. Yeah, so now, can we actually talk about taxes? Because taxes can be oh, very yeah, confusing. Yeah, yeah. That's a very you interesting know. subject too. Um, how yeah. does one, how are taxes affected in um, buying property and land? Well, if like, you, what if kind you of are buying, yeah. if you are buying, so let me, I'm just limited to buying. Okay. Right. So if you are buying property, there are two types of property. Mm. So let's put them in two categories, residential and commercial, mm-hmm. all right? Now, if you are buying residential property, I'm aware of two taxes, Mm. capital gains tax and stamp duty. Mm -hmm. Now, capital gains tax is where the seller pays tax on the gains they have made on the sale. So if you make a sale and you make a loss, you don't pay capital gains tax. Well, it's not a gain, it's a loss. But if you make a sale and there's a loss, hey, then there's a gain, you have to pay capital gains tax yeah. of 15 percent if you declare in your uh, tax declaration sheet that you want to pay the 15 percent but if you don't declare it it means that it can fall within the higher bracket oh yes. wow okay 
And then we have um, stamp duty. Stamp duty is payable by the purchaser. Mm. So prior to registering the land, and in fact the law says two months after entering into the lease agreement or two months after closing, mm. you ought to stamp the document. Mm. So um, if uh, the stamping is done, that is done by the purchaser. Okay. All right. Yeah. I mean, that's even that the, the, the seller cannot stamp also. But it is normally done by the purchaser. Yeah. All right. So, like to stamp, you, there's an official process, or you have to go somewhere specifically. Yes, you have to go to the stamp office of the lands commission. Okay. Okay. Yes, it's called the land valuation division of the lands commission. Okay. Yeah. So, um, that's that. Now, if we talk about commercial property, capital gains and stamp duty apply. Mm. However, there's also VAT, value mm. added tax. Yeah. Which ought to be paid if the property is commercial. Yeah. All right. So um, that's essentially those are the taxes. Okay. Um, and you know, I mean, sometimes people get in trouble for not paying taxes. Yes. What kind of penalties happen? Oh then? well, I mean, if you don't want to pay taxes, then I guess if you're ready to go to jail. <laughs> <laughs> jail okay yeah cool. that's it that's it that's like it. it's, it's even in the law yeah yeah, yeah you know i mean if, if you don't if you don't pay taxes you know you you go to jail mm-hmm. i mean if they, if, they, if they try hard and they can't get anything from you you end up in jail okay, okay. yeah then that's i mean good to know we don't want people to end yeah, up in jail yeah. so you have to pay taxes it's, it's, it's very important yeah are there other situations that could lead you to jail in like purchasing properties either as a foreigner versus as a Ghanaian? Oh, I mean if you if you are if you intend to defraud somebody. Okay. Yes, I mean clearly it's, it's the law is clear. Yeah. I mean if you um are using vanguards. Oh yes, 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 yes. But that, I feel like that happens quite typically. Like, yeah. A lot. So the the law says that the financier or the landlords, uh, you know, can go to jail. Oh, okay. Yeah, for for a minimum of ten years. Yes, and I think maximum I think twenty or twenty five years. Wow. I have to check. Mm-hmm. But the minimum is ten years, and um, the landlord, the financier will go to jail. The landlords will go to jail. Mm. You know, the what I want to see is that I want to see the police enforcing that law. Mm. It's a very good law in our statute books, but it appears it is not being enforced the way it should. Mm. Um, and most people end up going to court to fight some matters that the police should be dealing with. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Too sad. Um, okay, so we're coming to the end of our conversation. And uh, before we head into the Cecil Global aspect, I wanted to ask, do you have any sort of last um, yes, yes, advice, last for, advice for yeah, first time buyers. First time buyers yeah. is that when you are transacting or doing a land transaction, you have to approach every transaction as though you are dealing with a dishonest person. Mm. You have to be very vigilant mm, 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 when you are doing land transactions. Mm, mm, mm. And I don't I, in Ghana, but I think everywhere else, you have to, you have to be vigilant. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so just always proceed with some caution. Yes, yes. Yeah. You have to look before you leave. Mm-hmm. You have to be very vigilant. Yes. Okay. All right. Well, um, so now, finally, you know, we've been working with you for a few yeah. years now. Um, how how has your relationship been working with oh, Tesla Global? So I mean, Tesla Global, I remember the first time um, they reached out. You know, I think I wrote an article and they reached out to me and they. We were you know, happy with the article mm. and we had a chat and they were telling me about how they wanted to sanitize the real estate uh, sector in Africa. Mm. At the time, I think they, had, they were in South Africa, Nigeria, yeah. and they were trying to come to Ghana also. And they wanted to use technology, mm. blockchain technology to do that. Yeah. And they were trying to use uh, trusted lawyers, trusted bankers, you know. And you know, for an African guy who, lawyer, I mean, this was like, uh, what are these guys talking about? You <laughs> yeah. know, I'm like, are these guys serious? Mm-hmm. You know, what are you talking mm-hmm. about? This, yeah. So, I mean, I think that um, it's been, uh, you know, quite a journey, mm-hmm. and I've been on the journey with them. You know, I believed in them. I mean, I thought it was a joke, but I was like, well, let me just. This is very interesting, and this is, this would help us if indeed it works. Mm-hmm. And so I was on board with them, you know, from the beginning. And gradually, I mean, they've gotten 
the trusted lawyers, the bankers, the mm. surveyors, and all that, you know. So I'm, I'm proud of CESO, and I'm proud to be associated with the brand. And I'm proud that, you know, we've done some work in the past. Uh, and I would encourage them to continue. Yes. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. Thank you so much for having this conversation Thank with you for me. me. Yeah, it was so insightful. I learned a lot today. So <laughs> thank you very much. I'm happy to educate. <laughs> <laughs>